let's associate the concept of marginal rate of technical substitution with edgeward box in this video. So recall, the marginal rate of technical substitution has to do with the ISO quants for companies, analogous to how the indifference curves have to do Sorry, uh, analogous with how marginal rate of substitution have to do with the indifference curves of consumers. So it's the same logic. There's going to be a slope tangent to a point on the curve on the ISO quant of the companies that's going to show the willingness to exchange capital for labor. So in, in this case, suppose the orange ISO quant belongs to the clothing company and the purple ISO quant belongs to the food company. And again, looking from every company's perspective, so clothing has a convex in isoquant, which is the regular one, and food, looking from food's perspective, also has a convex isoquant. What does the isoquant show us? It shows us the combinations of clothing and labor for a given amount of production. Now, the slope tangent to it is gonna show us how much capital we're willing to exchange for labor for the same amount of production while keeping the same production. So for instance, if we have a look at the slope at the yellow point on the curve of the isoquant of clothing, so on the curve, on the orange curve, if we draw the slope like that, it's going to be rather steep, pretty vertical. So it's going to be a pretty high MRTS. Let's assume it's going to be equal to four. So the marginal rate of technical substitution at that specific point for the clothing company is equal to four. What does this show us? It shows us how much capital we're willing to exchange for one more unit of clothing. So we're willing to give up change in capital for the clothing company relative to a change in labor for the, for the clothing company. That's the intuition here. With the same logic, let's draw the slope for the purple isoquant over here from the perspective of the food company. So if we do that, if we draw that slope at the yellow point like that, it's much flatter, it's more horizontal, so it's going to be a smaller MRTS. And for the sake of the example, let's say that that MRTS at the of the food company at that specific point equals to 2. What does that show us? It shows us a very, very analogous logic. It shows us how much clothing the food company is willing to exchange to get one more unit of labor while producing the same amount. So the change in the capital of the food company relative to the change in the labor of the food company. And by using the same method of cross product, we will see how much capital is worth in terms of labor for each company. Very analogous to how we did it in the case of the consumer. So let's do that. If we do a cross product over here, what do we get? What do we get? Let's see. So we would have that four times, four times the change in the labor of the clothing company is equal to the change in the capital of the clothing company. Now, if we do some math here and assuming that we would be willing to exchange one unit of capital, let's say we would be willing to exchange one unit of capital of the clothing company, how much is it worth it in terms of the labor? Well, we should have one on this side as well because it's an equation. So the change in labor should be one over four units, meaning that's worth one over four units of labor for the clothing company. What we see is that the clothing company values labor more relative to clo relative to capital at that specific point because it's willing to exchange much less of it. That's the intuition. Now, same logic goes for the other company, for the food company over here. If we do a cross product, what do we get? We get that two times the change in the labor of the food company is equal to the change in the capital of the food company. Again, the food company is valuing, is valuing capital sorry is valuing labor more than capital but first let's let's give some examples because otherwise um other otherwise uh, the the logic is not gonna, not gonna be so flowing now one unit of capital assuming we're exchanging one unit of capital for the food company how much are we requiring in exchange for that well this should be an equation so if we have one here this one should be one as well so the change of the labor of the food company should be a half, one over two labor of the food company. So again, the food company is also valuing labor more than capital at that specific point because it is willing to exchange less of it. But still, we can see that the clothing company is valuing labor more than how food values it because it's willing to exchange only a fourth of it. So much less than what the food is willing to exchange. This again gives us a signal that there's room for trade. How do we do that? Well, suppose that we give a cap, a unit of capital. Suppose that the clothing company gives this unit of capital to the to the food company. So they're they're starting to trade. 
and the food company is requiring in exchange for that 1 over 2 1 over 2 uh, so 1 over 2 you um, god <clears throat> 1 over 2 units of labor so the food company is exchanging 1 over 2 units of labor for 1 unit of capital meaning it is giving that to the clothing company so this goes to the clothing company 1 over 2 units of labor goes to the clothing company but look the clothing company is only requiring 1 over 4 units of labor and it's getting 1 over 2 units of labor but 1 over 2 units of labor that's equal to 1 over 4 units of labor plus another 1 over 4 units of labor and what do we see here we see that the clothing company is benefiting it's getting what it requires plus something more that something more is called a Pareto improvement as well a Pareto improvement the clothing company is getting more input more labor while not hurting the food company so the clothing company will have now a bit more inputs than it it required meaning it can produce more so its production is iso quant is gonna go up the same logic as it was with the consumers where the indifference curve went up and now with this in mind if we actually play a bit with the graph and see how that would work out it's gonna be very analogous to what we had on the graph of the consumer behavior if we take this if we take this indifference curves the, their intersection and see how that how that works out recall that now we're oh man sorry about that uh, recall that now we have this in diff, this iso quants sorry iso quants I'm, I'm not having my my best day so i'm not in a good shape iso quant of the of the clothing company and uh, iso quant iso quant of the food company so if the iso if the clothing company can produce more now because it has more labor it means that their iso quant is going up so this iso quant will move slightly up it would be something like that and it's still intersecting the purple iso quant of the food company meaning that the food company is on the same level of production it's not hurt by this and the same logic goes to the food company the food company can trade in such a way that it is going to improve uh, his own his own production his iso quant would go higher while being, while being at the same intersection with the iso quant of the clothing company. So the clothing company is not hurt. And the same logic as before, this room for improvement can be exhausted. This room for Pareto improvement can be exhausted. And it is exhausted until we get to this tangency, just like we did in the case of the consumer behavior. Until we get to the tangency of the iso quants, there is not going to be any more room for Pareto improvement, for any more room for improvement, because at that specific point, the willingness to exchange capital for labor is going to be the same. So both companies value capital and labor in the same way. That's why they're, they're, they, they're, they don't have any reason to trade something for something else, because none of them prefers, prefers them in a different proportion. Hope this makes sense. So the MRTS of the clothing company will equal to the MRTS of the food company at that specific point and this equation tells us that we are reaching our Pareto optimality so we are literally exhausting all this room for improvement Pareto optimality keep in mind same analogy same logic as with consumer behavior we are done with this video in the next one we are going to see how this concept will apply to the production possibility frontier